Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lewis County Board of County Commissioners meeting for October 6, 2014. We have a quorum. All three commissioners are present and accounted for. We'll begin with the flag salute. Uh, Commissioner Schulte. Lead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, I move that we approve the minutes of September 29th, 2014. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the minutes. Are there any questions, additions, deletions, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We have two proclamations this morning. We'll deal with them separately. So I will entertain a motion to approve one. Uh, Declaring Lewis County Disaster Preparedness and No Weather Month, Radio Month. I need a motion. I need a motion. I need a motion. I move that we proclaim the month of October as Lewis County Disaster Preparedness and NOAA Weather Radio Month. I second that. Motion made and seconded. Do you, want to read, do you want to read the proclama proclamation or do you just want to comment on it, Steve? Uh, real, real quick comment. I, um, Want to say a few words Steve, here. this is our awareness. Steve, let's let's read the proclamation first. Oh, okay. Excuse okay. me. Thank you. I thought you were all done. Are you going to read it? Okay. All right. Lewis County, Washington proclamation: Whereas Lewis County has experienced natural and man-made disasters in the past and remains vulnerable in the future, whereas everyone in the county should prepare themselves to be self-sufficient for at least three days following an act of terrorism, natural or man-made disaster. And whereas individuals, companies, and government agencies should review preparedness plans, contact information, and emergency kits so they can provide essential services after a disaster. And whereas the loss of life and property can be greatly reduced if the citizens have available information provided over the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, weather radio, and whereas the Washington State Emergency Management Division will conduct a statewide drop, cover, and hold earthquake drill on October 16, 2014 at 1016 AM. And whereas, by participating in these campaigns, individuals, neighborhoods, schools, businesses, and organizations will have taken steps to prepare before a disaster strikes, thereby saving lives reducing injuries, and decreasing overall costs for recovery. And whereas, the importance of preparing in advance of emergencies and listening to NOAA weather radio will be highlighted during the month of October by NOAA, Washington State Emergency Management, and Lewis County Emergency Management. And now, therefore, we, the members of the Lewis County Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim October 2014 as Lewis County Disaster Preparedness Month and NOAA Weather Radio Month in Lewis County and encourage all citizens to increase their knowledge and awareness of the benefits of preparing for future emergencies and having a NOAA weather radio available. Done in this open session October 16, 2014. Sixth. Sixth, sorry. Okay, now Lee? Now you. All right, you thank you. I just want to thank you for uh, your support and participation in, what I, in helping promote this. I feel it's a very worthy cause. It's very timely, and it's something that we need to do a lot more of. We'll also be, um, I'll be setting up several public service announcements, and I would ask that if you're interested to let me know, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to ask for your support and help in doing those and spread the word so it's just not coming from one source. It, it is uh, something that I think is, is very timely. I, I do not think three days is enough. That's my own personal opinion. There's just so many things going on in our world that we need to prepare for and make sure our, our people are prepared because quite frankly, um, us as a government, we're not gonna be able to handle anything <coughs> immediately. And, and uh, it is important that our people understand this and know this right up front. So thank you very much. I think the three-day thing is a minimum, minimum requirement. Do you have yes, three days yes. at least? Yeah, yeah, minimum, minimum three to five days. You bet. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Mr. Chair, I move to approve Wait, this. Just a minute. We need to have. We got a motion on the floor. The motion is to approve the proclamation. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 
Okay, Commissioner. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the second proclamation proclaiming the month of October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Second. Motion made and seconded. Commissioner, you want to read this bill or you want me to? I'll read it. Thank you. Before the Board of County Commissioners, Lewis County, Washington, proclamation proclaiming the month of October 2014 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month is intended to draw attention to the fact that domestic violence is widespread and impacts every community member in Lewis County. And whereas the crime of domestic violence violates the individual's private privacy, dignity, security, and humanity due to the systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control and or abuse. And whereas the problem of domestic violence is not confined to any group or groups of people, but crosses all economic, racial, gender, educational, religious, and societal barriers, and is sustained by societal indifferences. And whereas we must work together to educate our communities about domestic violence prevention, supporting survivors, and speaking out against harmful attitudes and actions. Victims should have help to find the compassion, comfort, healing they need, and the domestic abusers should be punished to the full extent of the law. And whereas with leadership, dedication, and encouragement, there is evidence that we can be successful in preventing domestic violence in Lewis County through increased awareness, education, and community involvement. And whereas Human Response Network is the recognized accredited service provider for domestic violence advocacy services for the citizens of Lewis County. Therefore, be it resolved that the Lewis County Board of County Commissioners do hereby proclaim the month of October 2015 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Lewis County. We ask the community to embrace we ask community members to recognize the serious impact of domestic violence and to support victims and embrace the significant role each of us can play in pre prevention of domestic violence. Done in open session this sixth day of October, 2014, Board of County Commissioners, Lewis County, Washington. Um, Commissioner Jolie misread that it should be October 2014, not 2015. In your statement, that's correct. Correct that. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on the proclamation? Anybody like to comment? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of the proclamation as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Who carries? I move that we approve the consent agenda, items three through eleven, numbers one four dash two six zero through two six eight. Second. Motion made and seconded. The first item on the agenda, item number three, resolution 14260, is the weekly approval of warrants for payment. There are uh, 234 regular warrants this week in, in the amount of $2,501,715.50. In addition, it was the weekly of the month, so it's payday. There were 206 payroll warrants and 456 automatic deposits dated October 3rd, 2014, in the amount of $3,377,880.09. Item number four on the agenda is resolution 14261 is a cancellation of warrants. Periodically, the elder's office goes through and has to cancel some uh, warrants that are outstanding. Some are reissued, some are not. Um, in this particular case, there are four warrants that have been voided, three of which are being reissued, and I'll go through those. John Jones has a $48 warrant that's voided and reissued. CSI Communications, doing business as Day Wireless, has a, a warrant that for $1,378.85, which has been voided, not reissued. Lira, whatever that is, has a warrant for $50 that is voided and reissued, and CTS Language Link has a warrant for $125 that has been voided and will be reissued. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Tim Elsie, Public Works Director, speaking to item number five on your consent agenda. This is approving a master in a local agreement with the Town of PL, and this is resolution number 14-262. As you're aware, we have uh, entered into master in a local agreements with the local municipalities so that the Public Works Department can perform uh, duties that they don't have the ability to perform themselves, such as snow plowing, chip sealing, asphalt overlay, traffic striping, um, grading, vegetation control, guardrail repair, et cetera. This master interlocal agreement will last for a period of five years. It will replace an interlocal agreement that we had with the Town of PL that will expire December 31st of this year. So this agreement will last through December 31st of 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Good morning, Commissioners. Michael Strozik, Director of Central Services. Item number six on your agenda is approving an interlocal agreement with Fire District number six, which is in the Chehalis area outside the incorporated city limits for radio repair and maintenance services. As the board is aware, we bring several of these to you on occasions. These are requests from the local municipalities, in this case, Fire District 6, to provide radio repair and maintenance services on their radios that are installed in their aid units, their fire trucks, and those kind of things. This agreement will run through December 31st, 2015. The hour, hourly rate is $50 an hour, uh, $75 an hour if it's a call out on overtime plus mileage. This is the way that our radio services division of 911 helps out the smaller agencies and keeps them up and running. Item number seven on your agenda is resolution number 14264. It's approving an interlocal agreement with the Town of PO for radio repair and maintenance services. Again, this is very similar in scope. The difference to this one is um, just due to the time constraint that we were under to help the city of PL out. They purchased a used police car from the city of Centralia and the bids to do the radio service work um, in Longview were more than the car cost. So they asked us to help them. We went out and stepped up, got them back on the road and stuff. So um, we've already done some of the work on this, but again, it's $50 an hour, $75 for overtime, and 56 cents an hour if we travel out to the agency. Um, our main goal is to keep the smaller agencies in service and stuff. Item number eight on your agenda is resolution number 14265. It's the third quarter declaration of surplus property. As the board is aware, every quarter we come to the board with declaration of surplus property. We used to do it on an as needed basis. It works out better for us and the board if we bring it quarterly to you. In this case, there is 600 and 38 items, including 403 pieces of computer hardware, desktop, laptops, printers, monitors, servers, 13 chairs, two file cabinets, 41 digital and Polaroid cameras, 35 digital and micro cassette recorders, 13 pocket metal detectors, 19 traffic counters, which I might add that the Public Works Department has a buyer outside of the state already for, so we will, um, we are working to dispose of it that way. Um, a laser level and all kinds of office furniture, so. Um, and I will add that the, what we do when we have a large grouping of surplus property like this, we send that list out to the small municipalities and small cities. Um, I believe that has already been done because I was at a meeting Friday morning and the police chief from Winlock came up and gave me a list. So um, we will be working with them to um, help them out a little bit. We, that list went out to them via email and then we had our mayor's meeting and reiterated the fact on Friday morning. So. Yeah, we send it out usually out of my office after the board has approved it just in case we pull something off it. But I know the board has sent it out and you, like you said, you had a meeting Friday and Friday morning I was um, given a list. Thank you, Mike. Danette York, Director of Public Health and Social Services, speaking to items number 9 and 10. Item number 9 is resolution number 14-266. This is approving contracts with Morningside, Reliable Enterprises, and Lewis County Work Opportunities. Each state fiscal year, we receive funds from the State Department of Developmental Disabilities 
to provide employment or oversee the provision of employment services to adults with developmental disabilities. Uh, we receive these funds and then subcontract them out to our county providers. So these funds are for those three providers, Morningside at $246,000, Reliable Enterprises at $330,029, and Lewis County Work Opportunities at $160,000 for a total of $736,029. The grants run from July 1st, 2014 through June 30th of 2015. And the reason they're just now making it to your agenda is because it's the same time frame as the state grant, so we have to wait on the state grant to get to us. Then we develop the contracts with the subcontractors, get them approved, and then it makes it to here. Danette, this isn't the only funding these agencies receive. They receive the funding from other sources. Uh, yes, in most cases. I can't say for sure for Lewis County work opportunities, but I know the others do. Okay. Thank you. For different services. It depends on what programs they do. This is the only funding they receive for that particular program. Danette, is the timing for, uh, what was it, reliable? Mm -hmm. For uh, timing for payment of those bills worked out from before? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand the Didn't question. Didn't they um, have a, an issue with uh, submitting payments when they thought that uh, the new affordable health care came out? Oh, uh, I, I think you're getting that confused with the chemical dependency treatment. Is it the same and group, though? It, it is not. Okay. That, that was under the Eugenia Center. Eugenia Center, yeah. okay. Reliable Enterprises, their submission of invoices is on schedule. Item number 10, resolution number 14-267. This is to appoint a member to the Timberland Regional Support Network Advisory Board. Uh, there is a vacant position on this advisory board and Joplin Harper has submitted an application for consideration. If approved, Joplin will serve from October 1st, 2014 through December 2016, again on the Timberland Regional Support Network Advisory Board. And we did interview her and the recommendation came forward to the board to appoint her. Thank you. Good morning, Lee Napier, Director of Community Development, speaking on agenda item number 11, resolution 14-268. So before you today is a resolution for you to consider um, to lift the burn ban, the outdoor burn ban. That was actually lifted um, last week, but I'm asking that the board um, ratify that decision. Any questions or concerns? Thank you. Concludes testimony. Is there any other testimony on the consent agenda? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of passing the consent agenda as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We have one hearing this morning regarding the preliminary budget presentation and um, Staff report will be followed by a question and answer period where anyone in attendance may ask questions regarding the budget as presented and uh, following that, I, we will, uh, we won't vote. We don't vote on the resolution this morning. Just, it's just, it, this is an informational presentation only. So the hearing is open, uh, Mr. Walton. Morning commissioners, Steve Walton, budget administrator. As you stated, there's no uh, resolution associated with this uh, hearing. The purpose of this hearing is to give an overview of the budget process to date and to provide the opportunity for public comment on the 2015 preliminary budget. Copies of the preliminary budget in brief are available at the front of the room. There are also copies of a PowerPoint presentation that will be used for an evening presentation on November 17th at 5.30 p.m. here in the courthouse. RCW 36.40 outlines requirements for the budget process for counties. In accordance with the RCW, this preliminary budget was submitted to the BOCC and the auditor on September 2nd. Over the course of the last six weeks, meetings have been held to give each elected official and department director the opportunity to discuss their individual budgets with the commissioners. A notice of this hearing 
was published in the Chronicle on September 23rd and the 30th. Copies of the preliminary budget were placed at Centralia College locations, in county libraries, and it was posted on the county website. Today's hearing marks the first of two hearings to take public comment and questions on the 2015 proposed budget. The second hearing is scheduled for December 1st, which will also be the day of adoption of the 2015 budget. The preliminary budget sets current expense, which is the county's operating fund, revenue at $32,091,489 and expenditures at $35,284,475. The total preliminary revenue for all funds, including current expense, is expected to be $96,139,919 and expenditures at $102,000,000. $208,145. Revenue received in previous years will be used to balance the budget. These total amounts are compiled from multiple departments and funds, each of which have specific requirements. A more detailed discussion of the county budget and the process will be presented on the evening of November 17th. Are there any questions? And we'll open for questions from the public. Anybody have any questions on the preliminary budget? Seeing none, I think that's uh, inclusive. But Steve, is your comments for the hearing the same? Yes. Then I will open the hearing up and uh, ask if there any public testimony on the budget. We have no one signed up. Any, any comment from anyone from the public or the board? Mr. Chair, I just want to point out that the budget is the best guess on what we have is information today. There's information that comes in new at all times. Lewis County is one of the best managed financial counties that there are. We, we manage our finances better than, than most. And we have reserves and we're one of the top three counties right now that have properly managed their reserves and we're in very very good shape financially and, and having said that with a budget officer and administrator like we do that keeps us fully apprised of what our financial condition is from day to day virtually um, we're, we're aware of a budget that spends more than it takes in theoretically uh, and historically, even though we budgeted in this manner, we always seem to have rollbacks and revenue that's unexpected that has come in and expenses that don't quite come up to the expectations. So we're, we're very comfortable with, uh, with the budget as it's being presented today. Any other comments on the budget, primary budget? And that concludes the hearing, and we are not taking action on this day. We will take action on the budget at the December first December first meeting. So that's it. I encourage people to come out on November seventeenth. I think it's at five thirty. Public to come in, have their chance to come in. November seventeenth. Huh? That's a Monday night. Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Nay. We adjourn.